The Take Back the Land movement is a national network of organizations promoting campaigns dedicated to housing as a human right and securing local control over land. The organization seeks to question the legality of land ownership in a time when public money was used to rescue banks in order to preserve fortunes for private institutions and individuals. Calling on citizens' basic sense of morality, Take Back the Land asserts that the foreclosed land is now public and should be used to address the housing crisis. Recent campaigns in coordination with Occupy Our Homes have assisted numerous homeowners facing eviction by publicizing the facts of their eviction on a national level. Persons are then urged to call the bank prepared with details requesting that they rescind the foreclosure. Other campaigns have sought to liberate homes by defending homeowners from police eviction with rallied support by community members. Take Back the Land tracks the success of the campaigns by documenting the actions and their results. Here is a short segment from a talk given last week by Max Rameau of the Take Back the Land at the Summer Institute for the Center of Popular Economics. So to be perfectly clear, what Take Back the Land uh, has been doing since 2006 is we've been identifying vacant government-owned and foreclosed homes. We break into them and we move homeless people into peopleless homes. And then when they're found, we physically blockade and prevent the police from evicting them. And this we call Land Liberation and Eviction Defense, or Positive Action Campaigns. When we engage these positive action campaigns, we are doing at least two things. One is we are actively opposing immoral laws. And those are the immoral laws that state that banks have the right to own tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands, or the US government has the right to own 250,000 vacant homes uh, while human beings live out on the street or doubling and tripling up with their family members. So we are actively opposing those immoral laws. At the same time, we are also implementing what we consider to be moral laws. We think it is moral and good and just that if you have a family that needs a home and you have a home that doesn't have any family living in them, that the homeless family is moved into the house that doesn't have a family into it. We think these are good and just laws and those are the laws that we want to implement whether or not we get assistance from the government or from private uh, uh, interests. Uh, in addition to engaging in these actions, or rather as a result of engaging in these types of actions, we've been able to see what the real life impact of these practical, of these, uh, uh, of these positive action campaigns has been in a real practical way and even in, a, uh, in an economic way. The first action that we engaged in, Take Back the Land, was in October of 2006 when, the, when gentrification was still going, when housing prices were still going up. In Miami, in the Liberty City section of Miami, uh, housing prices were doubling and tripling just about every year. Uh, and of course, it was forcing the removal of low-income black community from that historically black community. Uh, it absolutely devastated uh, uh, that community. And while this was happening, most people expected that the government, when there was a housing crisis, would intercede and alleviate the housing crisis by making more affordable housing available. But in fact, the government was doing the exact opposite. It was exacerbating the housing crisis by implementing laws, policies, and uh, incentives which encouraged the building of housing that low-income people could not afford and encouraged the moving out of low-income people, particularly low-income people of color. So the U.S. government and the uh, city of Miami and, the, and Miami-Dade County jointly were uh, put a vacant piece of land on the corner of 62nd Street and Northwest 17th Avenue in the Liberty City section of Miami, up for bid uh, to developers. But they didn't ask for bid for money. This was public land, but instead of asking for money, the city and the county just said any developer who can prove they have enough cash on hand to build a condo within six months can have the land for free. So here we are, communities suffering from lack of housing, and not only is the government giving away public land rather than building something on it that the local community can use, but it's giving it away only to those who are too wealthy to live in that neighborhood and only to those who are too wealthy to live in that neighborhood and willing to build things that people who live in that neighborhood would not be able to afford uh, once it's completed. So uh, on October 23rd, 2006, a group of us seized control of that land and we built an urban shanty town there and it became known as the Emoja Village Shantytown. And we housed 150 people, 150 homeless people, uh, about 50 at a time, over the course of six months. Uh, but during that, it was an amazing uh, experience and uh, an amazing experiment, not only in 
uh, in positive action campaigns, but also in direct democracy, where the people who lived there, lived on that, uh, in, at the Emotion Village, were able to make their own rules about how their society ran. Uh, it, was, it was a fascinating study in how people make decisions when they're in certain situations. And end up writing a book about it. I have the book here about uh, Emotion Village. But the, the, most, the, most, the thing that I felt had the longest um, uh, term implications for us and most applicable here was that we found that street homeless people, people who were one day stepped over by society and who were forced to commit street level crimes on a constant basis in order to have enough to eat in order to find a place to live and were struggling and fighting all the time with, uh, uh, with other street homeless people and with themselves really, once they were given a place to live there at the Emoja Village and they weren't charged for it and we told them that they would have food every time that they were there, when they were, in other words, giving housing security and food security, it changed their lives forever. 